What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Rip City Rundown podcast, our first recording in over a month and a half. Our last podcast dropped March 13th. It is now May 8th as of recording, and there hasn't much changed, if we're being honest, with the Blazers ever since our last podcast. I mean, it's obviously start of summer. We're officially back. We're going to start talking about the Blazers, I would say weekly, but it might be every two weeks. Of course, once we get into free agency and draft time, we'll be posting a lot more content and then heading into next season. It's just me and Wes today. No Cody. If you want to see Cody content, you can go watch our TikToks, rcr.trivia, link in the description. Also, you can go follow our Instagram, rcr.trivia, where we're posting NBA trivia every single day. Draft Lottery Sunday. That's the only pressing thing to talk about. And a little report about Chauncey that came out today. West, how are you doing? play are you watching basketball have you been watching the playoffs yeah i'm watching i'm watching basketball it's good to be back here it's been almost two months but with the lottery um the lottery coming out on sunday that kind of i feel like kicks off the uh what for content creators like us who are blazer fans (laughs) our season is when they're not playing literally honestly like performance for the channel's better the interest in the team is greater like I mean, it's it's messed up. I will say I'm not going to, okay. I'm not going to say I took all those playoff years for granted, but man, we like, we were joking. We haven't us three together. We haven't done a podcast with the team in the playoffs. Yeah. I Um, definitely took it for granted. I mean, Damian Lillard will do that to you. Um, Yeah. I mean, do we just want to start with the lottery since that is the first thing that is going to appear on this journey in the off season? We I mean, we can. I do want to, before I forget, I mean, I know we'll talk some NBA basketball playoffs, everything going on just broadly, probably closer to the end or just as we discuss things throughout. But uh, we were major, major Bucks fans this playoffs. Like I was rooting for them. I won't say I won't say I was as invested as the in them as I have been in the Blazers. Like I wasn't as sad when they lost. But when I was watching the games, I was definitely getting as high and as low as I had been in 2021 when we were playing Jokic. So that was unfortunate say, to see them go down. I will say, you were you were here, I think for one of the games. Uh, yeah, for game four. Game four. Game four. Game four. Um, and we we both on accident were saying like the Blazers game when we were meeting the Bucks. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just funny that like. Just watching Dam on another team. Of course, the Bucks were not fully healthy. Um, I do think, although Indiana matched up really well with Milwaukee throughout the year, like I think it would have been a tough series regardless if Giannis was there or not. But they won. Um, but with Giannis playing, I think the Bucks win that series. And and Dame fully healthy. I mean, with the way like Indiana played New York in Game One, of course you just do the do the what ifs. I really wanted to see Dame and Giannis go up against Boston. Um, but man, you got to feel for Dame. Just unlucky in the playoffs, man. Still, still has not played a playoff series with a player better than CJ. Still has not done it. I, we could say Chris Middleton was better than CJ. We, we could. Well, we Aldridge. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Wait, that make that confuses me because everyone's always like Dame's never played a series with another All Star. They must be talking about like since Dame. Like he's there's never been two all stars on Dame's team because Dame wasn't an all star in that series. Maybe. So like it's not like Dame was playing with another. I mean he was, but you know what I'm trying to say. And and we made we made jokes that the Bucks were basically just the Blazers in disguise. Um, obviously Brooke is gonna is an upgrade from Nurk, and Chris Middleton is probably an upgrade from CJ the way he played at least. But Cody was joking. Pat Connaughton is still Pat Connaughton at the end of the day, and it's just, it was just yeah. funny to see that for Dame. Um, we can talk about actually since we're here let's just let's just talk about this right now um i saw some things like circulating in fact i saw it on it was one of the the mainstream podcasts i forgot which one but they were saying if you're miami because they stink do you literally call milwaukee and offer the same package to them that you offered to us which was just really funny to me um curious your thoughts on just miami dame the whole dame trade we can just talk about that now well, you do see in our agenda, I have, we're going to look back at some past moves and just kind of do a little update and check to see, obviously it's much different than it was when we made the move, but I have, did we like the Dame trade? And I have, man, Miami sucks ass. <laughs> like Miami's in a tough spot. Miami's talking all this crap throughout the summer, all this just like 
They still are. The Dame package, the Dame package. The Dame package is playing so much better than Dame. And then we see Tyler Hero just... I know they didn't have Jimmy Butler, but let's be real. Jimmy Butler might be out of Miami now because, I mean, Jimmy yeah. made a, had a great run. It was a great run for Miami last year, but I think his ego is absolutely through the roof right now where he thinks he's a top five player when he's just not. Obviously, Jovic stinks. Hawkes is great. I mean, Hawkes would be a guy I would love to have, but not for Damian Lillard. I mean, look, I think... I can't Jovic, believe we're talking about this again. Well, I just, I think Jovic and Hawkes will be, end up being good. The, the Tyler Hero thing was like the deal breaker. Like, bro, like, he's literally just the same thing. Honestly, you could, you could argue Simons versus Ty, Tyler Hero. We know what we're going to say. When, yeah, I mean, I think Hero is like... He's so, so many bad. Tyler heroes in the league, bro. There's so many of them. Exactly. He's so bad defensively. He's no more than Jordan Clarkson. Like, yeah, yeah which is he's a six man, which is valuable. People are going to be like, "That's disrespectful." To and what I say to those people, watch Utah then, because Jordan Clarkson was actually like pretty good. Yeah, like he's. Um, yeah, I still will just talk Dame trade just because I feel like you know, we haven't talked about it at all. In this <laughs> Dude, we're really talking about Dame trade, but I mean, it's on the agenda. Might as well get there. Yeah, yeah I, I looking back. At the time of the trade, I think I gave it an A minus, maybe A. Um, I thought the 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 players we got plus the draft picks was like was worth it because we we only got what th- ended up getting like three firsts and the yeah. I mean, I literally could be getting this wrong right now, but it's Holiday, Time Lord, Aiton. Then you have the Golden State pick that's fourteen this year. The Milwaukee unprotected in twenty nine, and then a pick swap with Bo- another pick picks, swap a pick swap and may- throw in maybe a second or two. I I don't remember exactly. We got okay. So for for Drew Holiday, we got Brogdon, Time Lord, and I am know for sure twenty twenty nine first. No, that's I think that's where we got the Golden State first and the Golden State pick. Oh, okay, yeah, yes, because I so I actually just looked. So this is actually an, an interesting. I just looked. Um, I this promise, guys, list. we're going to talk about the actual Blazers. I promise. This, this is just a list. This is just a list of the first rounders. And I'm not going to go through second rounders. But in 24, we have our own pick and the Golden State pick. In 25, we have seconds, our. I think. Yeah, in 25, seconds. we have our own first. But the whole thing, like the Bulls and thanks, Neil Olshay, like maybe we don't. I don't, you know. As, once, once we make the playoffs, we will not have the pick if we make the playoffs. Yes. Yes, you're right. So the Blazers will get their pick if it's one through fourteen. If it's yeah. fifteen through thirty, Chicago gets it. And if it they don't get it, it will roll over basically. It's like two game. seconds in twenty twenty eight or something. Or something. Like so that. we have our own first in twenty five, our own first in twenty six, our own first in twenty seven, our own first in twenty eight, and we also have the right to swap first in Milwaukee in twenty eight. So we got a pick swap in twenty eight. Then we got our own pick, Bucks pick, and the Celtics pick in twenty nine. And then we got us pick swap in 30. So 2029 draft class. What grade is that? I mean, I don't know. But when it's all said and done, Boston, we got, when it's all said and done, we got DeAndre Ayton, a first from Milwaukee, two pick swaps from Milwaukee. And then we got Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, and the Warriors pick, and then a pick swap from Boston. It's a lot. Lillard. That's a lot. And so, looking back, you can say, sure, I wish we got more at the time. You can argue if at the time that was the best offer. It was definitely one of the best. You could argue, who knows, there could have been an offer from the Jazz. But like we wanted to do it right by Dame as well. But if you were, if you kept Dame another year and traded him this year, you're getting what? Less, 50% you're of that? Less. 60% of that? Like, because, I don't even know right. if Drew Holiday is getting traded for Dame. Yeah, well, okay. So, yeah, I, I think – a. Looking back on the Dame trade, I'm going to say I am a fan of it only because I think we, I think we, not I don't think we sold at the peak, but I think we sold at the at the top. Like I don't I think, think Dame near, is going to ever have peak, a season yeah. that he had in 22 or 20, 20 like those se- those seasons. I mean, he deserved to go win a championship. We chose. That's a whole another discussion. We've talked about that. Was it the right move to? pursue a championship versus rebuilding, but we chose to rebuild. And thus, I think the package we got was good. The only thing I'd say is just, I think certain players have underperformed like Robert Williams. I think I was really excited about him. Forgot about him throughout the season. I mean, yeah, it's injury prone. Um, Brogdon is fine, but of course we, we wanted to, we'll talk about the summer and Brogdon possibly being the, not a casualty, but just the guy that you kind of got to pivot from. 
Um, I think he served his, his purpose here as a mentor. Uh, Aiden looked fine. And, 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 you know, the picks are at the end of the year, but I, I made this comment, like Milwaukee just crashing out of the playoffs like this. Of course, they're going to give it another, they're going to run it back probably, probably go again in 26. But after 26, when Dame's contract is up, I mean, Dame's not going to be what he was. Ya- like Giannis is going to keep putting pressure. It's impossible to project what the, these teams are going to look like at the end end of the decade, but it's just good, just nice to have. It's nice to have some additional capital that you can draft, or you can actually go for that trade when you need it in twenty eight. When it's suits and all yeah, the I mean, got gotta hope. Um, we're gonna leave the looking back on moves. We have more moves we want to look back on, but we're gonna shift that to the end. We're kind of just gonna go into the two relevant things right now about the Blazers. I mean, we, I didn't expect us to start this 10 minutes in, but it was great. I, that was a good conversation. I do, I do love when we get on tangents because it's, it's true. It's true. Um, draft lottery. I mean, there's not much we have to say about the draft lottery, but the draft lottery is this Sunday, uh, 5.30 Pacific. We got the fourth best odds. We got the 14th best odds. So with that being said, I'm just going to quickly read over the odds for those that didn't see it on each pick for the Blazers. This is their true our pick we own odds that we get anything higher than 14 is very slim for the Warriors pick. I mean, I think it's either you get 12, 13, 14 or one or jump into the top three or something like that. You're not going to jump to like five. Um, man, man, Cody is texting us right now and he's just talking about Instagram reels. Like we don't know it. Okay. That's for another day. First pick 13%. We get that second pick 12.8%. Third, 12.3. Fourth, 11.7. Fifth, 6.8. The most likely pick we get is the sixth pick at 24.6. Seventh, 16.4. Eighth at 2.2. So obviously we have the fourth best odds, but that probably means that doesn't necessarily mean we'll get the fourth pick. So obviously you can say weak, weak draft class all you want, but I think this is one of those draft classes where no more than any other class, but basically it being a weak draft doesn't hurt us having a second lottery pick, obviously. But I mean, drafting at 14, I mean, obviously at four, you're going to want to try to get the guy that's going to be your starting blank for the next 10 years. Like not necessarily your star. I don't know how many stars there will be in this class. Of course, there will be a couple, I'm sure. But even at 14, if this was any given draft class, you're not saying I need to draft a star at 14. Obviously, there can be stars drafted then, but you're looking for a quality role player, a guy that can, a guy that can be your starter for the next ten years, a guy that could be a quality trade piece. Like a lot of things, you go, you go there, or uh, you could go there. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm interested to see where we land. Obviously, Scoots representing us last year was B Roy. Last year, the lottery was hype. Of course, little did we know that getting the third pick would lead to the end of the Dame era probably would have been a little different celebration at that point. Um, but what are you looking for Sunday night, if anything other than just nuts on the floor, yeah. biting your nails? Well, the funny thing is, if we had gotten the number one pick, Dame would have stayed because Dame and Wendy would have been, my God, that would have been insane. Um, I'm looking for, I'm less concerned about where we land because there's not that like home, like there's not the, generational prospect in here um my i want sar i think he's the best player in the draft i think he's got the best like upside plus just like i feel like he's safe because he's like the seven footer that can handle the ball which you're gonna need as the nba continues to evolve um like if you don't have a playmaking big like you're kind of feel like you're kind of toast um but I'm just looking for positional fit. Like if we draft anyone under six six, I'm gonna be really pissed. I'm yeah, just I mean, pissed. if we get the fourth pick and the first three off the board is say, Sar, Sar, Richard, the the French guy that can shoot, and then like Ron Holland, you're saying I don't care if the next four on the big board are guards. I want Buzelis. I want who's the other guy? Um, Cody Williams. I want you know like, um. There's a lot of different ways we could go. Obviously, you don't want the guard right now. If I did a tankathon, sim to the lottery, we're looking at second pick, 
Oh my gosh, the Spurs get the first pick again. Second pick, they have us taking Rich, Rich, Richard, the dude from France. I think he's good. I think um, I think they have Sar us passing and... on Sar. They have Sar dropping at three there, and then at fourteen, they have us taking Filipowski, which would be catastrophic if we took Filipowski. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a scout. I'm definitely from here until Sunday. I'm going to look a little. I'm gonna actually no. I'm gonna wait until. I see yeah. where we land, and then I'll look at what like our window for guys are here. But I think Sar is the best option. I think if you can just give Scoot, I think Scoot, Ant, and Shaden are definitely going to be that that backcourt core at least until the trade deadline. I mean, things change, obviously. Who knows what they're going to do? But to me, this team's investing in Scoot. Um, obviously, you kind of have to. Have so to. I would love to see a athletic big next to him not necessarily a five like that can be the it can be the da show um but yeah. like a stretch four like i'm not saying we need to do what minnesota is doing with twin towers but like when you think about it like that team fits seamlessly together and i know they gave up literally the freaking lakefront mansion for rudy gobert and at the time like bro but like you have towns you've two seven footers to to throw Jokic. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I just think emulating something where you have playmaking, shooting and, and um, defensive versatility, but the dude's seven feet tall. Like that's, that's the key. Like Sar next to Aiton, all Mm -hmm. of a sudden, like then you can go, go see what Jeremy can go see what you can get for Jeremy. I mean, it's probably not a ton, but Jeremy's a, 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 just an absolute perfect guy to have on a rebuilding team. You just you, someone got to take the shots, <laughs> eat up shots. Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna not bombard you with questions about like oh, if we get these picks, what do we do? Because we're gonna have a month to do that. So lottery, of course, Sunday, big day. I will of course be watching. Moving on to the guy that calls the shots in terms of the the basketball team, not who's on the team. Talk about who plays Chauncey Billups. Reports coming out today that teams are monitoring the situation in Portland if they were to move on because we obviously moved on from Scott Brooks and Chauncey's brother, Rodney Billups, as assistant coaches. They are no longer with us, which I think is good. I mean, Scott Brooks, he was a nice guy to have on the bench, but I mean, for a rebuilding team, how valuable is it? Because, I mean, it's just, it's it's not like Scott Brooks was an elite coach. He was a fine coach in the NBA. And then Rodney Billups, like, I don't know anything about him other than that he's Phillips's brother, so I'm completely fine with moving on from him. I see a lot of people going two ways. I see people saying this is true. There's actually smoke in Portland, and Chauncey could get fired. Um, it, it's not like the report was the Blazers are thinking about moving on from him. It's teams are monitoring the situation. Weird. So people think it's uh, coming from Billups's camp, like because Billups said a lot of things at the post the postseason interviews. Not postseason. We're not in the postseason. The actual postseason. Uh, the end of season interviews where he was like, you know, I just want to be, I just want to coach a playoff team. I mean, obviously you can say, well, coach the team and make them get them to the playoffs, but obviously this team is not a playoff team. So yeah, just what is your whole take on this situation? I mean, I hate this question because it's like, is Chauncey a good coach? We don't know really. Like it's hard. It's such a hard conversation. Yeah. To me, like, I, I think I've said this, I've said this on a prior podcast, but you, as a coach, you're like, you're either the development coach, like you're with that, like that's your calling card or you're like the X's and O's, like I'm an in-game mastermind. And I think the best coaches are both like pop or Spo, like mm-hmm. they're, they're both. Um, but I think of like X, X and O like geniuses. I think of like Michael Malone in Denver I think he's really good. I I low key think like Ty Lue. I think Ty Lue's a great coach from an X's and O standpoint. I know like LeBron and him, like he definitely, you know, LeBron's nice and everything to have as a player. But <laughs> I think Chauncey has not had the opportunity, like you said, to show the in game adjustments X's and O. And when people say, "Oh, but his adjustments sucked in that game in December against Charlotte," like re- come on, like come, on. like yeah, it's just so hard to just, know when the team has no expectations. I'll, 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 yeah, exactly. Like I'll put it like this: like one of my f- former coaches, like 
led us to a state championship. And then two years later, the team had went, had like two wins. It doesn't make him a worse coach. Like talent, yeah. talent matters. And, and, and like for, every, I feel like there's probably people out there that are typing like, well, we, we can't close games with him. If this team won 34 games this year and had the ninth best odds in the lottery, we would be saying, what a, what a pointless season. How dumb was that? Like there's no winning if you're Chauncey Billups right now. Yeah, I'm I mean, not going to sit here and defend him because I can't say he's a good coach. He hasn't proven he's good. He hasn't proven he's bad. Now, the problem is he's in year four of a five-year deal, and we still don't know that. Even if it's not his fault, it's like, how does this happen with the Blazers? Like, yeah, I, I think you have a whole new group out now. You brought Chauncey in for Dame, CJ. Dame wanted him. You brought him in with a CJ team, Nurk, Norman Powell still on that team, Robert Covington. This is coming off of the 2021 loss to Denver. I mean, I get Chauncey, like, loves Scoot, loves Ant, like, and all that, but I wouldn't mind bringing in a guy that's just like, this is this era's coach. Like, Chauncey yeah, was kind of mixed between eras. You could argue he's this era. I mean, he loves Ant. I think Chauncey has some value with de- developing. I mean, Ant wasn't this good until Chauncey. He didn't have his chance until Chauncey, but, like, so, what so I'd many say ways. Is, what I'd say is I, I would, if you put a gun in my head and was like, you got to fire him or not, I would maybe, like, at the end of this year, I would I would move on. Um, only because to, to what you said, like, it's unfair to Chauncey, but he kind of served as this like I'm um, the captain of this ship lost at sea post Dame before we're good again. Like that, it's just a weird time for the franchise. Like it's just you're pivoting and you don't know where we, we're in the wilderness right now. Like we're after Dame, we still haven't seen that like bona fide star we can build around. That is the next Dame. Doesn't have to be a guard necessarily, but you know what I mean. So I think once you've established that. I, th- I think like, yes, Chauncey loves Ant and I think he loves Scoot. And that's important, especially when you have guards that you want to develop. Why not bring in one of the best defensive guard, one of the better guards? I mean, he won a title in 04. Um, he has a lot of knowledge to share and I think it's made the guards better. But for like Ant or Scoot to like take that next step, I, I just don't think you can be like, you, you, I don't think you can have a coach that's buddy buddy, like. And I'm not saying like you have to have Tom Thibodeau, who's an absolute hardo. I'm not saying that, but I'm like you got to have, like the like the freaking OKC coach or Chris Finch, like dudes that we probably hadn't heard of before. But like yeah. Chris Finch is calling out Minnesota for being immature when Cat scores sixty, like. And I'm sure Chauncey would do that too. But like you kind of got to need got you need coach or you need a head coach that's going to be like. I'm here to win. Like, I just don't think, I think it's really hard for Chauncey to be bad for four years, not his fault. And then be like, all right, guys, now I'm going to lead you guys to win it. Like, it's just, you can't do that. It's hard. If I had to choose right now, would I rather keep Chauncey for the next three years? Or because it's, I, if I asked the question to you, would you rather extend Chauncey's contract an extra year? He still has two years left and then one more. Would you take that or would you fire him right now? I would, I would give him, I would let him play out the two more years. I just think when you're ready to actually, no, start that's not a question. I, if you had, if you would, you let him finish out the two years, or would you fire him right now? Oh, you I just would let said him that. Finish out the two years. Oh, eh, I just only because I think, like, it, I think for Scoots and this class, I think for Scoot and Shaden, their Scoot is still 19. Like, I just don't think you can put him through the head coach carousel. That's not good for him. And we're not going to win the next two years, like. Like anyway, so I think when Scoot makes that leap and this team's like, okay, we're ready to contend for a playing spot. We're ready to contend for the playoffs. I think that's when you get a serious coach. Not that Chauncey's not, but a coach that like has yeah. A- see, that's the th- the thing with that though is the way I I'm not saying there's a, I don't know who the better option is. So I'm I'm in a hypothetical world that there is a better option out there. I mean, ideally there, you there fire is. ideally you fire Chauncey. You don't hire a coach just based on name value. I think that's kind of no. what we did with Chauncey. You hire way out one like Mark Dagnalt or Chris Finch, like a guy I've never heard of that's been through the ringer of assistant coaching and now Will Hart, like Will Hardy, one of those guys. And like you go ahead and do that right now. I don't want to do the, even though it worked with the Warriors, I'm not comparing us to the Warriors here, but like I don't want to do the thing where like we just keep the coach around, we make the playoffs, and then we fire the coach and then 
we hope that next coach like takes us to the next level. I just don't think that's realistic. I think like if you think Chauncey's the guy, then he's no. the guy and he's going to be our coach. I I hope he's the next coach for five, 10 years. Like, but I want it like, if you're an organization, you need to know if he's the guy three years in. You're, you're, you're the organization. You put him in this situation. Like, I swear, if Joe Cronin has another press conference, I don't know when his next one is, but if he's asked about Chauncey and it's like, so what do you think about Chauncey? And he goes, you know, we, we like what we have. We, we want to see him with a successful team. Like, but when you're, when you're in a rebuild, you like have to, you can't, you have to slow play it. Like, I don't think you can make as a small market, you can't make this rash call of like, well, now we just need to like, why not let him just finish out his contracts? It's not going to change anything of what this team is going to do or not. I don't think. Because I don't think we said talent matters and the talent this upcoming year or the next year is probably not going to be good enough to contend. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that like Chris Finch would bring instead of Chauncey is just like, I mean, I, I don't really know. I no, mean, I, yeah. See, that's where that's I'm like, I don't know. This is truly a conversation. That's just speculation from us. Like I'm just saying, I want you, I don't want you to wait to say like, I, we're going to get our guy into our good guy in two years. I want you to like get him now. And like, this is your guy for this era of Blazer basketball. Chauncey could be that guy. That's if Joe Cronin thinks he's that guy. Like I, I mean, can't yeah. do anything about that. I, I, just I, just, I think I don't want limbo. I don't want like, eh, is he the guy? Like, well, this, commit whole, to him. this whole Chauncey era has been limbo. I mean, like exactly. That's I why just, it's like, I just think, I just think for scoots and Shaden's development, you like, why would you just like, I, I'm just afraid we go on this coaching carousel. That's fair. So I would keep Chauncey. Because, I mean, if if you think he's a good coach, then you should keep him. And if exactly. you think he's a bad coach, then you should keep him because we need to lose games. I mean, like, what are we doing? The, the Yeah, just the final thing I'll say, it's kind of what I've been saying. But the one thing I don't want to do is say, like, this is a prove-it year for Chauncey. Because, like, that's putting him no. in an impossible situation. Because, like, like you said, this team is not going to be a successful team no matter who the coach is. You could have prime Greg Popovich. Pro- Greg Popovich yep. was the worst team in the West this year. Like a good coach isn't going to just suddenly make a horrible roster good. Um, no, all I right, agree. That's it. that's it on Chauncey. Yeah, and like I just – yeah. I mean, look, if they move on from him and bring in – I'm not going to lose sleep over it. <laughs> I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm just saying I just don't think there's a ton of benefit to doing it, but I could be wrong. Okay. Moving on. Summer yeah. moves. Summer moves. This is something we will talk about for the next two months. This is not a pressing topic right now, but I just want to, I'm going to name some guys and I want you to say, do you think slash want them to be on the team next year? Okay. Time Lord, Robert Williams. Uh, yes. Okay. Do, Brogdon. Okay, do, do I explain or no? Uh, yeah. You, I mean, if you have a reason to a reason behind it, if you have a reason, why you, why, like trade value, you don't think he's good or you think the, he fits well? The only reason why I'd say keep Time Lord is because I do think he's uh, – his position and his like his skill set is just not it, – it's pretty rare in the NBA, just like elite defense, elite rim protection, elite shot blocking, all that, um, elite finisher around the rim because he can go up and get anything within the zip code, but – I would keep him for the sense of, at the very worst, like give him some extended run at the beginning of next year and then maybe flip him at the deadline for a first or something. Okay. That's what I, I, but I would I like that. Him. I think he's one of those guys where you start with him on the team, you let him show what he can do, pray to God that he stays healthy until the trade deadline, and then uh, you try to get some serious value for him. I don't think it's someone you should keep the entire year because unfortunately he's going to get injured. Like, yeah. Which, he says he's going to get injured at some yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, Brogdon, Malcolm. Uh, get, uh, sell. Summer, like get. You don't want him on the opening if day. If he's roster. on the training camp roster, I'm gonna need explanations. I would tend to agree with that. The final guy I have, because I'm not gonna say like Delano Banton, because who really cares? Uh, Jeremy. Hmm. Is he Honestly, in the middle of those two? For Jeremy, I think this is going to sound lame, but I think it depends on who we draft and where. Like, if we draft Sar, the French guy, which again, I'm only saying the French guy because I don't know how to pronounce his name. 
Yeah, um, like but like, I, I would give them runway from day one, which sure. people might disagree with, but I would like, like, let's, let's make some moves in, in, in bunches here. Let's, let's get something for Brogdon. Let's, let's draft our starting four. And while we're doing that, let's go get assets for Jeremy that can maybe lead to a starting three or a sixth man. Like, let's just like, Joe doesn't like, there's more to just like, okay, we're going to draft and make one move. And then we're going to wait till the summer. And we're going to trade for Delano Banton for a second round pick and cash considerations. Like that. Yeah, like you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to try to speed run a rebuild. Cause that doesn't work, but you no. want to have a little bit of like controlled urgency. Like, and the only reason why teams, okay, not the only reason, but a big reason why like teams like OKC are in literally position a right, right now is the one seed with all those draft picks is because like they just, they traded Russ and PG. Like they had PG, did PG sign with OKC as a, as as a free agent? Oh, uh, he got you no, know, he got traded, but then he did re-sign. But they the the bit like they got Paul George. I'm I would just guarantee without even like looking it up, they got more for Paul George than what they gave up for him when they got him. Absolutely. Like you need like like Phoenix now. Like Phoenix is gonna. I know they gave up a ton for KD, but like they now have okay. Beal's value is, is toast. Nurks is toast. But like. Booker could just now they can just trade Booker if they wanted to and build around Kate, Kate, KD plus like better. I don't know. The Blazers are in this weird spot where like Jeremy and Ant would be their best players, but you're not going to get something crazy for that. So you got to kind of strike when the time is right, I feel like. Yeah. Um, and then my final question revolving about just like the summer is who are the like surefire locks for the starting lineup? Next year, we'll say plus man six seven. Like, if you want to say this guy's for sure going to be coming off our bench, you can say that. Um. Okay. I'll two locks in the starting lineup next year are going to be Shaden and DeAndre Ayton. Wow. Those are those are locks. Um. I mean, off the bench is I can guarantee you Chris Murray is going to come off the bench. I could guarantee you our first round draft pick is going to come off the bench, unless it's Sar or a repair is going to come off the bench. Like, I have a time lord's going to come off the bench. I have an interesting question for you. I'm not going to say Jeremy just because who who knows. I have an interesting question for you. Would you trade Simons this summer if it was right? Okay, I was about to say, where's Simons? Um, who? I think I think I I really would not want to. I think still Simons has a ton to to give. I think he can be. But but but, but that's the oh, thing. Here's like, the problem. No, go ahead. Give for what purpose? That's that. And like, like unfortunately, Tyler. we literally at the start of the show we were like Tyler Hero's value. Tyler Hero sucks, and we were like Anthony's better. But like they're the same type of player. Theoretically, I think Ant will be a better player. I think he has more potential. Um, the front office kind of put us in this situation with the whole three guard thing. And yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, to answer your question, yes. If I have to, if I get a great offer, if, like, I, if, want if, to, if, if I just want to give Scoot a wide open lane to be like, if you're going to go all in on Scoot, I think, by the way, Scoot's a lock for the starting lineup. If Scoot is not yeah. starting next year, that's a, I think that's a problem. Like, so So here's my question. And I could be off base here again. The market is who knows, but like if Orlando came calling for Simons, because my goodness, do they need some shooting? Wow, or Simons next to Suggs would be nice with Paolo. And would you take? Would would you rather go like? Because again, like you know, whose value is not good right now, and you might not even like him, but like Franz, like I think Franz is in range there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even know if they would move on from from Franz for Simons just based on positional value. So, so would you go? Would you give up? Would you give up Simons for like Wendell Carter Jr. and picks? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think if you're trading Simons, you're getting like maybe you get. You I don't. Get, what are they like? Caleb Simon. Houston and like John Isaac or something. I think you try to get like you try to get oh, one of their young. Uh, young players, like not even a valuable young player, but like a guy that's like a true, like like a guy that's a wing that fits positionally, and then like you get their first this year, and like I don't think Simons is getting any more than like I but can't. No, he's definitely getting a, a first. He's getting I mean, eight first, but like I was about to say, like if you get another first, first, no. 
first if you got Jonathan Isaac in a first for Simons, I think you like Joe Cr- like you don't even let him finish. You say yes. Yeah, exactly. Um I definitely think that's something you have to consider. I would hate it. I mean Again, yes. But like I, would I hate it but at this time like, I'm not emotionally attached to a single person on this Blazer team right now. Like no. if we traded Scoot, I wouldn't cry about it. Now, I, I don't want had, to, but if you if you're starting lineup just theoretically because, you know, I saw in your notes, project start starting lineup. I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying, theoretically, Scoot, Shaden, Isaac, Saar, and Aiton. The spacing is buns, but, like, that is ath- athletes all over the place. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's interesting. That's almost like the Minnesota route, minus, like, having the, the greatest, possibly the greatest big shooter of all time, but, like, just and length. Like, just length. And, like, the next face of the league. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Uh, um, but I, I think that's that, that's okay. what Portland's always said, though, in this whole rebuild. They're just like, we want to go strong, fast, and athletic. Long and, and athletic. And like, have length. Let's do it. But, like, Jonathan Isaac is that guy. And I'm sure, like, the ma- the Magic would hardball it because he's actually, like, a defensive unicorn. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, his offense and his, shoot, his shot is, like, so poor right now. They're like, it, it, it's a puncher's chance to get him. The other thing that this is random. I like that, by the way, working with Orlando. That's interesting. Only because like what like they are, they're going to have to improve the roster because Mm -hmm. now like you have the momentum. You just literally went seven in a game that if you were playing game seven at home, Orlando probably would have won. That was just Mm -hmm. a home team wins type series. Um, It's so painfully obvious. You need offense. And like, of course I've heard many different, people to orlando i've heard like clay clay paul george but like why not get like a guy with like actual gravity like i get like paul george has gravity paul george does it on both ends but like i don't think it hurts to just have like a microwave like you have literally plus defenders at every other spot yeah they don't have the guy that's like can take you i mean they have paula can take you one-on-one theoretically but like I'm oh talking like from the guard level. Like Paolo's not going to pull up and shoot a three. Like, yeah, it was a tough oh. watch. Do you know how? Like, if I'm Orlando, I'm like, if we can just extend the court by like, f- like if we can extend our offense to five feet beyond the line. Like, Simon's is like on one hand, he he's he, one, two, three, four, five. He's somewhere in there for best shooters in, in the NBA. I mean, he is. Um, I mean, I I think I would agree. I think. And and I, I just. For my own sake, I just I need to see some some scoot Shaden backcourt minutes. Oh God, I hope Shaden's not one of those guys that's always hurt. Shaden's the X factor. Yeah, like can so this it's a guy we don't even talk about that much, just because like we don't know. Can this dude put eighty two games on 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 record for a season, <laughs> please? Yeah, um, we'll have a lot of time to talk about just no, we will but things for the summer. I think like for me. What I want to see from this team is I just want to see the picture get clearer. I just want to see like a not we've picked a direction and we have our goals of getting more athletic and longer yada yada GM speak, right? Um I just want to see like Joe Cronin be like put his freaking balls on the table and be like, Oh, you're offering me Jonathan I's gonna first take Simons, we're running this backcourt because this is who I drafted the past two years and these are the two guys that I chose over giving Damian Lillard any ounce of help. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, put your balls on the table and like have some, have some balls. Have some freaking, I don't know, what's just like back your picks. Like, say no, I drafted Scoot because I think Scoot's going to be a top three point guard. I drafted Shaden because he's one of the most athletic players in the league and he's going to be a multi time all star. Like, show some belief in these guys. Like. I think yeah. Shane Sharp. I think Shane Sharp. Okay, be careful when I say this because oh, I boy. absolutely do not believe he's anywhere near this guy, or probably won't be. But like Shane, Shane Sharp, Sharp can be Anthony Edwards, that type of mold, I just hyper athlete, yeah, that can score the ball. Like, and Shane Sharp has literally universes to go because Anthony Edwards is like. Might win the jumping, championship this year. Jumping rungs at by the day, right? Like, like right, right now. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I just want to see Joe Cronin, like I said, put his balls on the table. And, of course, on the flip side, there's a part of me that's like, don't be reckless. That's why GM's job is so hard because you 
you, it's got to be the perfect. We, we we have to win the trade. We have to win the trade. Everyone has to win the trade. <laughs> like that's why trades are so hard to make. It's like, are we winning this trade right now? <laughs> like, oh my gosh! I I'm just thinking back to just Cody's text, just talking about how we never have talked about the playoffs. <laughs> Like what? Speaking are, of gosh, this is all we talk about. Speak, speaking of, did we win the trade? Should we go through some more pass moves? Sure. Uh, I put two down because these are two, one from I'm, two deadlines ago and one from no, both from. I two, am two deadlines ago. So glad you put this one on there because I was going to bring them up. Yeah, but, we'll start. No, let's just start with the obvious one: the heart for reddish and and a first round pick that ended up as Chris Murray. Um, Obviously, it's a guy you would love to have on your team. It's I swear they say it on the broadcast all the time because it's so true. Like, gosh, Josh is so fun to watch. But like, everyone's saying he wasn't going to stay in Portland if you were going to go this direction. He's not valuable. So like, sure. Um, but man, like that's not a good return whatsoever for a guy well, like Josh. Yeah, I, I would say for the for the situation of him not like him being a free and expiring basically mm-hmm. like you're you got to resign him if you trade for him like i i do think that hurt us in terms of the like the leverage we have i'm glad we got a first for him i know like he would for sure get a first now but also by the way maybe i go the pet the, the pat bev route here i mean if i played 48 minutes too i could get 12 rebounds in game. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm i mean kidding. i'm not it's I'm he's not a, yeah but he's not even a stack guy like he you just no. see his impact on the court the thing for me is like it's unfortunate that we worked with New York because I know New York was probably like, well, we can't give you up to can't give up too much because like, what if he doesn't resign with us? When in reality, like they knew no matter if he was, they, he was resigning because he's got his Villanova boys. Um, and it's New York. And this would be a totally different conversation if we didn't draft Chris Murray or if Chris Murray showed a little more, but like, so, I don't see any potential to be anything but a bench role player in Chris Murray. So, like, so, so that's, that's the piece. Like, I think, we can't Jerry still out on Chris Murray, obviously, but like, I think Chris Murray's like, I don't want to say a ceiling, but like his role is going to be like a three and D guy off the bench. He's just, he just, he doesn't do it for me. Um, I know, but like, it's been one year. I, he had I know. Some nice moments. Um, I'm looking at I like guys behind be, him, like not even many people really showed much this year behind him. I mean, I guess Ben Shepard, who like apparently can't miss a three now with the Pacers. Dude. Uh, he was a couple picks after, but other than that, I mean, but you could have gone ben for Shepard's like the crazy ball. Gigi Jackson pick. Yeah, I know, but. I don't know. I think Chris Murray is, I'm like, I, I think at the end of the day, Sure. Do you want to get more for Hart? Yeah, but like Joe Cronin got what we wanted him to get. Like, you can't really. You got to look at it at the time it happened. Like, <laughs> duh. If Josh Hart was doing what he did now for us, of course we wish we had more. But like, you can't project that. And also, like, I think New York is literally the perfect situation for him for Josh. No, Hart. I agree. I just I think. Uh, like, are you looking okay. for two firsts for Josh Hart? No, no, That's no, no. no. I'm looking for. I wish we. Again, it's early, so like I know this is you can't yeah, necessarily yeah, say that. Red. But like we were so stupid to say like, oh, Cam Reddish, that's that's interesting to get back. Like, even at the time, sure, we were like, Oh, Cam Reddish has potential. He's a fun player to watch. He was so you shitty at Duke. Up. You gotta like, gas up your boys. Like we're talking about oh, he was he was nice at Duke when he wasn't even that nice at Duke. Like and then just I just don't, I don't see any potential in Chris Murray. Like I think he could easily be one of these guys that's off the team, and he could be a CJ Ellaby like type guy. Like I just even in the minutes like he played at the end of the year, he just didn't show me anything. But I can't say that it's it's for sure he's not going to be good. No, but I think I think Chris Murray is eventually going to be a. I think Chris Murray for for whatever reason is going to be the player that is going to be like the deal breaker in a trade that we do. It's like they, they want Chris Murray, like for some reason, and we don't want to give him up because he's like, but he's going to be like one of those guys. And then we're going to look back and be like, well, you know, Jeremy and Chris Murray got us this. We can thank Josh Hart for that. Like these, these, the goalposts are always moving for these trades. So, but I will tell you we, as we move on, one that is absolutely inexcusable now that I've seen him play in the playoffs is Nikhil Alexander Walker for Joe Ingles in a second. 
I mean, oh my gosh, that is a four. And he's looking – that's a three and D player. Dude, oh my he gosh. is so – like, wow. He's, he's so And he's so much bigger than I thought he was, like, or longer, taller. Pause. He's Jaden McDaniels <laughs> – Jeez. He's Jamie McDaniel's light. Um yeah. yeah, that's a bad one. Joe bad Ingles. One. Joe Ingles got some minutes in Orlando in game seven. And Joe Ingles literally got traded to Portland be- to use our training staff. Never played a lick. And then I don't know. Let me let me look, see if that second's been used yet. Um I'm sure it's not relevant at all though. Um yeah. Well, but you can rap that. about that if you want to. Huh? You can just rap about that if you want to while I try to. Or I'll pull it up. I got it right now. Like, uh, 2027 second round pick, I think. Okay, so who did. Where did we. I forgot, but how did we get Nikhil Alexander Walker in the first place? Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm going to have to go down. Let's I see. thought he came from Utah, maybe. Maybe in the. I don't know. No, maybe it was the CJ trade. Was he? Can't, he oh. oh, I want to say I think he was included in that trade. I mean, again, all these are like hindsight's twenty twenty. We didn't know Nikhil was this good, but like that's also why you have a front office that can see these things. Like the Timberwolves Facts. saw something. Like Facts. you can't say like, oh, he's just he fits so well there. It's so much better. Like sure, he fits, but gosh, I'm pausing my ass off right now with Nikhil. Um, but yeah, like you should have seen he's this good. You should know like he's going to be good in this situation. Okay. Can I like see how he got where? Okay. Transactions. No, he was okay. Yeah. He was part of the CJ trade, CJ, Larry Nance, Tony Snell for Josh Hart, Thomas Adaranski, a 2027 second round pick, a Didi Luzada, a 2022 first round pick. Um, and then he and, got traded for Joe Ingles. Oh, no, wait, the second was a 2022 second. So who did we – ooh, wait. Did we get Jabari Walker out of this deal? We're doing deep research right now. Wait, so Nikhil Alexander-Walker was in that trade? I didn't hear you say his name. Oh, yeah, he was in the CJ trade. Okay. Uh, Wow, we got Jabari Walker out of it, though. Um, That's not terrible. Obviously, Nikhil Alexander-Walker is better than Jabari Walker. Um, is he? Yeah, he is. Um, he probably is, but like again, like you put Jabari Walker were in his spot. Like, I mean, I'm sure yeah. Jabari Walker's balling. Yeah, I'm sure, but it's uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, it's a guy you would love to have, but all these things though. But like, if Nikhil Alexander Walker was on the Blazers right now, I I know it's like you should be able to get that out of him. But like he could be putting these defensive shifts in as much as he wants. No one would give a crap about it because yeah, he's on he a 20. You add amazing. one more win. Like it's unfortunate. Like we can have all these, all this talent and all these guys we traded away. But like the only reason we're talking about him this much is because they're on the bigger stage. Now, what you could argue is you have Nikhil Alexander Walker when you still have Damian Lillard, you, you got him in the CJ deal, like figure out how he can be good, figure out like he's exactly the type of guy we needed around Damian Lillard, a three and D long defender. Like Josh Hart's exactly the guy we wanted to have around Damian Lillard. Um, if these guys are playing up to their level that they're playing right now with the Blazers, last, say we have Damian Lillard last year, say we trade for, again, I'm a Kale Bridges, like, like we can we can still do the Aiton trade because Dame was it didn't have to do with the Aiton trade in reality it was Nurk and Nas for Aiton like nothing else in that great Grayson Allen I think was a big part of that though but he didn't have to do with Portland like it really wasn't that big of a like we could have we basically could have gotten Aiton too so we could have gone in the next season with freaking again we're doing this hypothetical again but we could have had yeah, Dame Josh Hart Aiton McHale. Nikhil Alexander Walker, that's not winning a championship, probably. But like, that, that's the, we're never going to win a championship. Like, let's be real, the guys. Big, the big discussion was what's a better chance to win a championship, and yeah. quite frankly, neither are good chances because it's so hard to do it. Yeah. You need you need a generational guy like low key. <laughs> yeah, which Dame Dame was, but he was he's definitely hiking down the mountain now. Yeah. So you got anything else? I, I don't know how long we've been going here. 
We've been going for 50 minutes. It's pretty good for a Blazer podcast. I uh, have not hey, much man, to talk I've about. Uh, I show. put on Instagram just an hour ago, drop some questions for the pod, and I think we covered everything that's major. They said Nico, some guy named Nico, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, said potential coaching replacements if Chauncey leaves. I mean, we talked about if Chauncey is gone, but we're not going to talk coaching replacements. We kind of did, though. We would want a guy that's not name brand. Uh, Talks Basketball said Ibubaji stay. Sure. Oh, yeah, like what are your thoughts on like doop and <laughs> I I I just don't I'm gonna wait. You don't care. A little bit. I'm gonna wait. I just yeah. I you know Cole, I am right there with quite you. frankly don't care. Uh some guy said should the Blazers move on from Ant? That's from IGM.n. We said that. Andrew Weltnet said, is Ant extendable? Maybe you meant to say expendable. And then he said missed you guys. So thanks. Um miss you too, man. But I think we're gonna close it. Do you want to talk anything with the with the playoffs right now? Or I think I would just say that it's. I think it's going to be. Um, I think Boston just okay. Boston's gonna come out of the East, but Boston, New York would feed families, bro. You're just going between TD and MSG. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. Um, and that's not only like a train ride. I think OKC has. I think OKC is really good. I, I think it's going to be New York versus Boston, Minnesota versus OKC. It's so hard to not be prisoner of the moment, with, prisoner of the moment with Minnesota right now. But I'm going to say it's Minnesota, Boston, and Boston wins the title. I, I I really think Minnesota could win it all. Like I mean, I think we don't realize that like this this doesn't happen a lot, but at the same time, like it does happen. Like a guy just makes a jump and wins the championship. Like. I mean, well, who's the last guy to do that? I like think I think 15? it's Wade, like Wade on this level, like this young, in, in two thousand six, like third year, just won Not the championship, like, wasn't expecting it. Like, was Kawhi young enough in like fourteen? But like, it wasn't Kawhi's team. It was. Yeah, that's fair. It was like Tony Parker, and still you got Tim Duncan. I mean, young you could argue was it was the, the Warriors were kind of like that, like just jumped on the scene. Um. But I, I really I think it's Boston's year. Like I think Boston's going if I had to rank my top three, it's Boston, probably Minnesota, then Denver. Like I think Denver could ease. I think easily. OKC is still so underrated. Oh, I I love OKC. I do like watching them. I mean, sure, you can not like the Shea. Like Shea gets a lot of calls. Um but I just I like their vibe. I like Jalen Williams a lot. Uh, also, in Shea's game got aura. One, game one last night, like Luca looked just. They got defenders, man. They got guys that they got guys that can guard. I won't say guard Ant because Ant's a different player than Luca in terms of like his play style. So it's a little easier to. I don't want to say it's easier to slow down Luca, but like Ant's obviously more athletic. He can beat you in different ways. Luca can do that too, but I. Th- I see what you're trying to say. Like it's just easier to stay. In just because you can stop Luca doesn't mean you can stop Ant and vice versa. Is basically what I'm saying. Um, but I was gonna say something about I saw that was funny on TikTok about Shay. Oh yeah, it was like Shay talking post game about uh because the MVP is getting announced today. And he was they were like, "Are you gonna watch?" And he was like, "Oh, I didn't realize it was tomorrow because he knows he's not gonna win." But all the top comments are like. Oh, now I know why my fingers were tingling. I could sense his aura 17 scrolls ago. <laughs> it's so funny. That's insane. Yikes. Um, yeah, but arguably but bad I, matchup I, for OKC, either Denver or... I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, they don't have... They do not have the sides to play. I just think, like, Minnesota is just, like... That fit and that vision is, like... It was so awkward... At first, but like they have, and I, I also just think like Minnesota, and I've heard this from people, but like Minnesota has like they built their team to beat Denver. Like, no, that's fair. I mean, yeah, same guy built both teams. Because like so sick. Yeah, like you look at, freaking look at Gobert. Of course, like first first thing you're like, oh, Gobert's going to guard Jokic and slow him down. But you put him on Gordon, and now you're literally the the baseline is non-existent now. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to make Jokic score 45 on Towns, who's literally the same height and can just – I know Towns is literally the cheap foul 
a cheap foul connoisseur. But like, yeah, he's and then the also worst. just Edwards being this guy now. Like, there's I don't there's not a single guy on Denver that can guard him. Yeah, because like I was listening to the Bill Simmons podcast and like he was saying the reason he hated the Gobert trade was like, why would you trade for Gobert when you know Gobert when you know that Ant's not going to be this guy for another four years? Like. Gobert's going to not be as valuable as he is. Like, you're not going to be able to win a championship because you don't have that guy. But, like, the fact that Ant is that guy already is like, oh, only the Timberwolves could have predicted that. Like, you can say Ant was going to be this guy when he was 26, but a 22 is just crazy. Dude, like, he's dude. really, he, he's literally like, everyone's saying, like, this is on a, we're going down such a hypothetical on if they do end up winning the championship. Like, if they win the championship, he's going to go to team USA and like is he now the best player like is he better than like if he wants to championship is he better than Curry is he going to be mean, that guy like he's probably going to be like he's going to be the next like american face yeah he's going to be the face of the nba he like and then everyone's like there's so many parallels with him and jordan it's really scary like i he's not he's not going to be jordan but like he wins a championship at 22 then like I'm kind of like regurgitating what Bill Simmons said, but it was like so facts. Like it was supposed to be mad magic and birds team for the dream team. It's supposed to be LeBron and KD and Curry. And then MJ wins the championship in 91 and 92. And then boom, he's the face of the team. And now he's that guy. It's, I just think there's a boogeyman out in Boston. Exactly. I think Boston, like if Boston doesn't win this year, there's going to be so fires in the streets. But, but I, I, it's, you look at a hypothetical matchup, like, again, if Ant's going to play like this, who is going to, like, okay, you, I just think Boston, like, you got Drew Holiday, you can throw on him. You got Length, Tatum, and Brown, you can throw on him. And you got Derek White. You got Derek White. Like, you have, you have guys. And then, like, but then on the flip side, like. You got guys to guard Tatum and Brown. You got guys to guard Tatum and Brown. And then I think it's going to come down to, like, does Towns or Porzingis play better? Like that's what it comes down to. I know now that I, but now that I think about it, like who guards who, Porzingis? Who guards Porzingis, and then who does the other guy that's not guarding Porzingis guard? Like I think, because like go, that's a series where Gobert can get put. Like the reason why Gobert is so good in this Denver series because Aaron Gordon can't shoot a three pointer. I know. Nah, I, now that I think about it, I like Boston a lot if they play Minnesota because all five of Boston, even if you bring in Horford as the sixth guy, they all can shoot the three. And then you can – like, we've yet to see Gobert have to be drawn out. He was just guarding Nurkic last series, and he's guarding Gordon this series. Like, maybe he has trouble against Chet next series because there's – but they're probably just going to stick him on, like, Dort or Giddy. Like, yeah, there's no guy you can do that with with Boston. So, I think Boston – I just think Denver is in such trouble because, like, the thing that unlocks them is, like – you literally, it's so hard to guard Murray Jokic, like pick and roll, especially mm-hmm. when they do it and they redo it like four four times and it's dribble handoffs at the free throw line. It's so stupid. But then like, if you defend it well, the biggest step up lobbed Aaron Gordon. But now you have Gobert coming over and help. Like, and it's like as good as Jokic is, like Aaron Gordon is not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to throw a lob over Gobert if he's in the right spot. Mm-hmm. We saw that in game one. Literally saw it. Like Aaron Gordon was... We took his under rebounds because I mean, who who how is he going to get boards? <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I I don't know. I think OKC and OKC and Minnesota just during the regular season both felt like teams that were like one or two years away, and Denver was the boogeyman, and then Minnesota just breaking Denver. Yeah, and, and it's like I would I year. would say like it's a two zero lead. We've seen two zero leads get blown, but not when the home team lurks. Lur- Loses the first two. We I think it's only Blazers happened like five or six times. Against, we thought the Blazers would come back against the Pelicans in eighteen. Yeah, and, and they got swept. So I, just, um, I don't think yeah. I don't think Denver has has answers. Also, like the Jamal Murray thing is just like Jamal Murray was being a baby in Game Two, bro. A baby. It was Dude, actually wild. Here's the thing: the NBA like is refing so much differently than they did last year, even than they did before the All Star break, like. Remember that time when Alexander Walker and McDaniels were just hounding Murray up the court? Wasn't a like, foul. Th- but that is a foul earlier this it, year. But, like, but if, when you you're right, it gets called. But when you actually like watched it in slow motion, 
Like Murray's just grabbing McDaniel's trying to No, yeah, I mean, but like that's the thing like it's a that's why I think Minnesota is so good right now is cuz like they can play physically. Like the NBA they're letting them play. I like it more. I like it a lot more than I would rather I love that's why I love playoff basketball more so than just like obviously stakes are higher but like I love a 96 93 game like yeah it's so like, fun I mean if I'm ever a, a coach in basketball or like trying to teach a team to play defense like I'm pulling that game two yeah. up that first half game two. I mean they had them as Kevin Harlan said they had them in a straight jacket <laughs> literally it was bad. um so Jamal Murray was like clapping when they finally like got a huge like it was wild to see nba players like that who were they were out. literally falling apart in front of our Fold. eyes like jamal murray just folded because someone got physical with him yeah like sorry buddy you're not going against austin reeves and d'lo anymore yeah um that's all i got yeah that's all we got uh that every time i watch a game on tnt i miss when the blazers were on tnt it sure would be fun if they were there uh of course, like we said, this is why we did it. Lotteries on Sunday, so make sure to tune into that, and then tune in next week as we give our thoughts on it, talk about who we could get, talk about what we could do because the summer will get a lot more clear in a couple of days. Um, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and also follow us on our trivia channels, rcr.trivia, and we will see you next time. Peace.